What is going on traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Trader AMC Short Squeeze slash Gamma Squeeze. What are the possibilities? Why is this week potentially one of the biggest weeks for this new story? We will run through a plethora of data. This video will be jam-packed. You definitely want to stick around. I'm going to be going over the short interest, the S3 algorithm. I'm going to be going over the volume, the options data, sourcing a bunch of data points to try and get a sound analysis. I'm also going to be giving you my price prediction or price update. If you get anything out of this video, leave it a big fat thumbs up just like this. Leave it in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of this week in AMC. Let us get right into it. So I think a natural starting point is to talk about the volume of AMC shares. As you know or may not know, AMC, at least according to the CEO, is 80% owned by investors. And there are 4.1 million individual investors like us. Now, the reason that this is important, but also suspicious is because if you look at the AMC volume data, right? Let's look at the volume data. You'll see that on some days we've traded in the 500 to 700 million share range. Now I know that volume day traders account for volume, right? So if I buy and sell a share twice, for instance, that day, that is going to count as two. However, trading this much volume when you have a float of just under 500 million shares is rather suspicious to me when you account for the fact that most of the shares are accounted for by retail investors, right? That is one of the reasons why people talk about synthetic shares or talk about um, naked shorts is because some of the volume data would be frankly unrealistic if we we're just talking about natural shares as part of the free float. A huge portion of this 80% would actually have to be day traders that are trading in and out for this to be a natural representation of the actual volume, right? Natural volume. Now we do see volume dropping a bit and we'll discuss this when we look at the AMC chart because it is important and potentially an indicator that we are likely to see another leg up and a continuation of the gamma squeeze. So keep that in your hip pocket for now. Another quick thing that I will be looking at, I talked about this in previous videos, is the SEC reports for failure to deliver. If we have a spike in failure to deliver when the next round of data comes up in the next couple of weeks, then we will know that almost certainly there are naked shorts on AMC. The spike that you see here was the failure to deliver report for January at the height of the previous squeeze when there were over 27 million shares unaccounted for, meaning that they were likely synthetic part of naked shorting. All right, now let's look at the options data because this is where stuff starts to get interesting. The options data for the June 18th expiry, which is the Friday, the next Friday as of the recording of this video, you will see that we have the highest number of open interest, meaning open contracts on call options for the $40 call on AMC. Now, usually you expect to see the highest volume and highest open interest in the at the money or just in the money calls. Currently, AMC is trading around $49. These are the $40 calls. However, Here's how a gamma squeeze works, and this is different than a short squeeze. I've talked about this before, so I don't wanna belabor the point, but a gamma squeeze is basically a component of options. It's not a component of shares in the same way or directly a component of shares in the same way that sh a short squeeze is. So in a gamma squeeze, it's basically the result of market makers that are selling options to the market because they have to provide liquidity. But in order to not get raked in the process, they go out and, and buy shares. So here's what I'm talking about. This is a market maker, right? And they want to, to provide liquidity to the market. They're the ones who are selling you the option. So if you and I buy a call option on AMC, the market maker is the one that is sell is creating that contract and selling it to us. Okay. So let's say that this market maker, you want to buy the, let's say that you want to buy the $50 call on AMC, right? AMC currently is trading, like I said, around 49 bucks. So you want to buy the $50 call on AMC. This is you right here. The market maker is selling you this $50 call, right? Now, when you are short a call, so let's just put minus one for minus one call and you are plus one because you bought it, right? So when you sell a call, your risk is essentially undefined in a short position because when you sell a call, you're obligated to sell the person that bought the contract from you 100 shares of AMC at $50 if you get assigned. Now, if AMC is all of a sudden 100 bucks, well, you just got shafted because you as the market maker have to buy it from the market at a hundred bucks and sell it to us at $50, right? So the way that they avoid this risk is as they 
are selling at the money options or options near at the money, they're, they will go out to the market and buy 100 shares of AMC at the current price. So again, if you want to buy the $50 call, right, which is near at the money, the market maker doesn't want to be in an open ended short. So what they're going to do is they're going to go out to the market and buy 100 shares of AMC at 49, which is the current price, right? That way, if AMC does go eventually to 100 bucks, and the market maker has to deliver shares if they get assigned, they already bought the shares at 49. They don't have to go out to the market and buy it at 100 and then deliver it at a $50 loss, okay? So the gamma squeeze comes from this share buying that market makers have to do in order to keep providing the market liquidity with near at the money calls. Now, if a market maker, if you wanna come out and buy the $145 call on AMC, it's so far out of the money that the market maker is not really afraid yet. So buying these 145 calls, yeah, I mean, they're cool in terms of a, a lotto play when AMC is trading at, at 50 bucks or 49 bucks, but the market maker is not going out likely to buy shares in order to reduce his or her risk because these are so far out of the money. Now, with the gamma squeeze, <clears throat> The higher that the price goes, right, the more that market makers have to do this, buy 100 shares in order to limit the risk. And the more that at the money calls are sold, right, or near the money calls are, are sold, so anywhere between the, I would say, the 40 and 55 range, the market maker is likely going out to buy shares. So in order to keep driving the gamma squeeze, there will have to be major volume coming in to at the money or near the money call options, right? Trying to buy a shit ton of the $145 strike or even the $100 strike is not going to enforce a gamma squeeze. This is very important to remember. So as the price of AMC starts rising, market makers will have to keep buying shares in order to make sure that they are not in a bad position, right? But they are not worried yet about these calls. Obviously, if AMC crosses the $100 threshold, which we'll talk about price predictions in a second, but if AMC crosses the $100 threshold, then then yes. I mean, the market makers will have to start accounting for shares and buying shares to protect themselves against all of these strike prices here. I hope that was clear. All right, now let's talk about short squeezes and the potential of a short squeeze. Again, we talked about gamma squeeze, which is a component of options, right? A short squeeze is by now, I think most of you know what it is, but when there's a high number of shorts and folks like us start buying shares, right? That obviously will drive the price up and, sh and people that are short or institutions that are short will likely start to get scared and they are going to then be buying up shares to close their short positions, but their buying up of these shares is also fueling the price. So it is like this feedback loop, this you know, unending feedback loop that continues and continues to drive the price up as long as the short interest is still there. Now, a short squeeze and a gamma squeeze can happen at the same time. And a lot of times they do. And in this case, when you see price hikes on AMC, it is likely a combination of a short squeeze and a gamma squeeze happening at the same time. All right, so let's talk about the short interest real quick. So those of you that are very familiar with the story will have already seen the video of the S3. I think it's the... What, is it the CEO of S3? All right, it's the founder of S3, Robert Sloan. You might have seen the video of him talking about why AMC, along with some other stocks, are still at a 10 out of 10 based on his proprietary metric in terms of chances of a short squeeze. AMC is still up there, meaning 10 out of 10 is the highest score based on S3's proprietary metrics. They've come up with an algorithm to try to identify how likely a short squeeze is. Now, obviously, you can look on something like Ortex, but Ortex will just tell you, for instance, that AMC short squeeze is at 17%. It dropped a little bit on uh, on Friday. We are now down about 5% from that. So AMC short, uh, short interest right now is around 12%. But it doesn't really tell you the likelihood of a short squeeze. That is why S3 came up with this proprietary method of calculating whether a short squeeze is probable or not. Now, according to what they track, they actually say that AMC hasn't seen a short squeeze yet because as AMC stock price came back down from January, right, the number of shares shorted steadily increased until mid-April where it has essentially remained around 90 million. So the number of shares short, according to S3, has not yet declined, meaning that it, it, there isn't a true short squeeze that has, taken, that has taken effect yet because in a true short squeeze, the number of shorts would have to close, meaning would have to decrease. And here, if you look at the graph of AMC's price, which is in green compared to the short interest shares, which is in orange, 
you'll see that the short interest shares has not yet gone down significantly proportional to the price. Now, I'll leave a link to this article in the description so that you can take a look at the analysis. But essentially, they take a look at the total number of shares shorted, the short interest percent of float, the short interest compared to the company's market cap. They take a look at all of this and come up with their valuation. So according to them, AMC is still at a 10 out of 10. And if you're very curious to know what other stocks are currently at a 10 out of 10, according to S3's metrics, there's AMC, GME, Clove, Beyond Skills, SPCE, UPST, Bed Bath & Beyond, Envis, and Nikola. Okay, now let's take a look at the chart. If you're familiar with my AMC videos, you know that I pointed out this bull flag here on the one day. And I was saying that if you are a riskier trader, you can actually buy AMC at the bottom of this bull flag here you know, at around the $40 level, just above that, and hope for a bounce from the support. You could set your stop limit below support just in case you get shafted, and AMC does drop to the 21 EMA around the $35 mark. However, I said that more prudent traders will want to wait for a breakout of this in order to buy AMC at the breakout. Either way, it is forming a bull flag here. This is called a continuation pattern, and it is one of the strongest patterns known in charts. Now, why is it called a continuation pattern? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. The price has rallied, and now it is forming a consolidation, right, before continuing to the upside. This is what we expect out of a bull flag. Does it mean it will happen 100% of the time? No, but trend is your friend until the end. So we exploit it until it is no longer there. Now, AMC did see a 15% rise on Friday. Here's what's very important, is that Mondays, the start of the week, is usually a great day for these meme stocks, including AMC. As I pointed out in the in the, in the outset of the video, I said, keep the volume data in your hip pocket because you'll want to see how volume, how AMC traders react to volume. So anytime that the stock is on an upward momentum, you tend to see a decline in volume because traders can't possibly keep buying shares. Plus, if it's true that 80% of AMC shares are owned by retail traders, there just aren't that many shares to buy in the first place, right? So you tend to see volume waning before another rally up. And this technical setup here is perfect because we are we see volume drop, even though it's still in the $300 million range, which uh, 300 million share range, which is crazy considering that AMC's float is 500 million, right? So you are we are now seeing the volume drop as we are forming a continuation pattern here and i expect that if we if we see a typical monday where amc does rally so the last monday amc rallied almost 15 percent. the monday before that it was actually tuesday because uh, memorial day was was that monday but we saw amc rally 23 percent. go back to the monday before that you'll see that amc rallied 13 percent, and and that monday was the start of another rally so it is my view that we'll start to see this feedback loop between volume uh, share sold and call options, right? As the volume starts to pick up again, if we do see that bounce and a breakout of this flag, then we'll see all the FOMO buyers come in and buy this breakout here, right? And then that gamma squeeze phenomenon that I was talking about before, the market makers, as I, I showed you in this cute drawing here, the market makers will now have to start covering because they don't want to have an open-ended short position on the calls that they sold. And we were just talking about the June 18th expiration. Imagine how, how many more calls will be open for the June 25th expiration and the July 2nd expiration, which are looking really thin volume-wise compared to June 18th. But as this week starts winding down, you will start to see more calls getting pumped into the June 25th expiration. So the technical setup is perfect. The gamma squeeze potential is there. The short squeeze potential is there, right? We're still at a, a high according to the S3 data and we could be off to the races. Now, the beauty is that with this type of setup, you could set a stop limit below your entry here if you are a pure technical trader. If you're just buying shares for the movement, that is a different story. But I like to provide both scenarios because not everybody falls into the same camp. All right, now in terms of price prediction, I know that some of the community thinks that I'm a little bit conservative because everyone wants to hear 200K or 300k you know that is very unlikely based on the amount of volume that we're getting and the level of the short interest right the short interest would have to be a lot higher for us to see and the volume would have to be even higher than the 700 million range in order to see prices that high also there's been talk all over youtube about these dark pools where they're trading at 1500 i mean that is such 
nonsense. Dark pools are real for sure, but dark pools are actually meant to take advantage of uh, price opportunities, not pay $1,500 for AMC when you can easily buy it on the open market for less than 50 bucks right now, okay? So just keep that in mind that when you hear these topics discussed on YouTube, most of those people are new to these concepts and they just parrot each other, but no, nobody's buying AMC for $1,500 a share when you can easily buy for 50 on the open market, right? Like if you can open up Robinhood and buy AMC at 49 bucks, there's no reason if you're an institution why you should buy it for 1500. Anyway. So in terms of price prediction, the I'm going to give you a few uh, price targets, right? And this is how technical traders do it. There isn't a technical trader that's going to tell you, oh yeah, the price uh, pr prediction is 100K and that's it. No, there are milestones along the way. So the first natural milestone you want to look at is the 3.272 level, which I called out a few weeks ago, right? Which is where the price closed on June 2nd, right at the 3.272 level. FIB numbers are not magic. So the first price target that I'm going to give if we do break out and see that volume on Monday is we could see this week the $63 range breached, right? The next natural price target I'm going to give is the four Fibonacci level. Currently, the four Fibonacci level is around the $77 price target. Now, these are short to midterm targets, okay? In order to keep propelling the price up, we do need to see an insane amount of volume. So just keep that in mind. However, based on the options data here, as I said, the gamma squeeze effect, right? If AMC does say pump to that $77 level, then you will see share buying all along the way to try to cover for, for market makers to try to cover their asses, right? And that share buying is then going to keep pushing the price higher. And you will start to see covering of these calls, maybe these really out of the money calls right now in the $100 range. So it's not out of the realm of possibility to see the 100 to $145 range on AMC, which would basically take us out to the last strike price if a true gamma squeeze occurs. So just to recap, first stop, $63 if we break out of this bull flag. Next stop, around the $77 mark. And I think if we get to 77 bucks, then $100 is almost a certainty just because of the gamma squeeze effect and the rush to cover for market makers to cover their asses. Anyway, traders, that is it for this video. If you got anything out of this video, leave it a big fat thumbs up just like this. If you want to learn how to trade options, check out the options course below. We continue to sell cash secure puts on AMC. Vertical spreads are also a great low risk way to get on get in on AMC. Obviously, you could buy call options as well. Call options are very risky. I did a whole video of why that is. Check that out here. Sign up if you want access to the trade alert. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.